So um, straight to the topic, trauma is, it, it can be defined in many ways, but please today allow us to define it as a very deep, distressing and disturbing event that occurs in a child's life that overwhelms the child's brain to cope. And so the child uh, responds in feeling helpless and loses their self and loses their uh, ability to, to cope. And so they get what we would say, they, they, their memories come in as very disorganized. And so that is trauma in children, in brief. It comes in, uh, it can be physical, it can be psychological, it can be emotional. So it presents in different ways. Sometimes it is acute where it happens the first time in a child's life or it is something that happens uh, immediately. For example, we can have like an accident, a child who gets into an accident. It is that particular situation this child has undergone trauma. Uh, she could or he could have witnessed it or been involved in that accident themselves. That is one type which we call acute. And then there's another one which we call chronic. Chronic is where this child has been exposed to, 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 to continuous trauma or to continuous disturbing or distressing events in this child's life. For example, child abuse you find this child uh, has been abused repetitively or he, he or she lives with parents who are always fighting and abusing each other. And so this child gets that trauma all the time. The child can't even escape it for a minute or two, all the time. So it becomes repetitive and so we say it's chronic. Sometimes this uh, uh, trauma presents differently it can come out as complex. When it is complex, the, it means that this child is being exposed to multiple traumas. For example, it could be uh, there is child abuse to the child himself or herself, or uh, on top of that, the parents are being abusive. That's another also trauma. On top of that, she or he has to keep witnessing and experiencing these different types of traumas in their, daily, in their daily lives. And so they all affect them differently. Sometimes these children take up the trauma that is not theirs, which is uh, commonly called as vicarious. You find that this child, because the, he or she lives with the pa parents where the mother is always being beaten by the father or vice versa. So you find that this child takes it upon themselves to carry the pain of the person being abused. And so this child also gets the trauma. So you see, uh, it keeps presenting differently. And then, of course, there is the trauma that is transitional, that the child didn't even see, the child has not even witnessed. But because of the, uh, of the past, this child gets the trauma. For example, you find a child uh, who knows that maybe he or she is living in America and she knows that he or she is black and she knows that once upon a time slave trade happened and they took their, their great, great, great parents. And so this child, you find this child having trouble and being traumatized of the past that was not even, she, she or he did not even live it. But because of the past that he, he or she has read or has seen on TV, you find this child also getting that trauma. There is also trauma that is developmental, where this child could have uh, gotten trauma as a child. For example, it's most common in children who lose their parents at a very early age. And so you find that this child, uh, for every step of the way, this child is always getting traumatized. And so this child lives the trauma. You see that in all these six types of traumas, this child is always and always, you know, being exposed in one way or the other. And so today I wanted us to know how it presents as in, okay, if you know that that is trauma, how would you know that this child is getting trauma? First of all, you should know that not every traumatic event affects these children badly. It is only those ones where the brain is overwhelmed. For example, like I said earlier, uh, 
a child can lose a parent and the child mourns the parent and grieves the parent. And then this, then the phase passes. So we say that this child has gone into the normal trauma of she has reacted or she has responded normally to the traumatic event that has happened. And the brain has not been overwhelmed. But sometimes the brain, uh, this child could lose the same parent or the same situation where the child has lost a parent. And this child, the brain is overwhelmed and fails to cope to how to manage this. And so you find that this child, uh, the memories that she gets are all disorganized. For example, nightmares or gets, uh, uh, start seeing, reliving the trauma, keep seeing the, 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 the person dying all the time, all the time. And so that is when we come in. That's when we say this child is traumatized or this child has lived an, a traumatic experience. So sometimes trauma happens and the brain is able to manage. And sometimes trauma happens and the brain is overwhelmed. We should take note of that. And so in the pre presentation, or what we would have called signs, how would you know that your child has trauma? Some of them, we are blessed to know them. So the body responds in particular ways. Some children get phobias because of an accident that happened in their lives or because of something that happened in their life. You find that this child can't, you know, has different phobias. Phobia, he can't or she can't stand a dog or she can't jump or she can't go on the second level of a building. Or you find this child fears uh, uh, like spiders, you know, overwhelming fear that we call phobia. So you find these children have phobias, different phobias. You find these children can't sleep at night. You wonder why a young child didn't sleep at night. Every child is, is able to sleep. It's sleeping is okay. But you find that your child can't sleep. From morning to morning, if you are, the child has to sleep, it has to be with many, many, you know, uh, sing a song, take a lullaby, give a story, and then the child will sleep just two seconds and the child is up. Or when the child is going to sleep, you find it says, I put all the lights up, make sure the whole light is all lit up, the whole room, and then this child can sleep. So you see, some of them present like that. Others are ashamed, especially the teenagers. They get ashamed of where they come from, of the trauma that ever happened to them. So you find them, they're, they're ashamed of their bodies. They are ashamed of the environments they live in. They, they take things seriously. For To them, uh, they, you, you don't have to say anything according to their body because they're already ashamed. They're already living a guilt. You know, For example, a child who was abused sexually. This child grows up knowing it is the worst thing that can happen to anyone. So they already have shame brought up on themselves. Remember, they lose their self, their, their sense of self. And so they grow up with that. Some children become numb, where you find this child doesn't care. He doesn't care or she doesn't care. So they don't mind. You find she was a child who was a good girl, but maybe she was sexually abused. And then she grows up to not care. So she will sleep with anyone and anything, as long as she gets away with it. Why she is numb to that. They are, they don't, they don't, it's not that they don't get the pain, they feel the pain, but they are numb to it. So because it happened in their brain, they feel like when they do it, they get away with it and life goes on. But unfortunately, it's trauma ha that happened in their lives. Other children start uh, bizarre behavior. A child that uh, was communicative and loved and was social starts hiding, you know. Uh, you find them, some children kill their pets. Some children start uh, harassing their siblings or neighbors. You, you get different reports in school. And, and all this is because of what? Of a trauma that happens. And so it presents. In trauma, the signs and symptoms are not like any other disease where you say she'll get a headache and get, uh, you know, uh, something like that. No, these ones, the body responds. And so from the body's response, responses is where we are getting the signs and symptoms. These children get angry all the time. So you find some of the children pour it on the other children. So you find they are bullies, and so they are bullying other children. Or you find them running out of the crowd because they want to hurt other children. Other children get night terrors, you know? Other children get, um, they start bedwetting. You wonder why a child is in S1 and S2 and is bedwetting. Why? 
Why? You will find that when you go back to, to, to look at this child, you'll find there's a problem somewhere. Some children don't concentrate in class anymore. Why? Because they don't find it, you know, amusing or, you know, they do everything defiant. So those are the signs, a few signs of traumatized children. And so it comes in many ways and these children get traumatized and we, 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 if you ignore it or if you see it and just say it's okay, then the children uh, grow up into getting something that will get them comfortable. So you find them abusing substances. Some of them will go for alcohol, others will go for drugs, you know, stuff like that. And then other children lose it and, and, and you know, they lose it. And uh, for, for some, even the, the brain stops even taking those memories that was storing badly to, into another state where well, now we go into personality disorders. You find that this child who was a good child is now portraying signs of children who are narcissistic, sad, sadists, you know, uh, into what people call today, that's why you hear people serial killers, serial rapists, serial kidnappers, all because they are just trying to manage a trauma that happened a long time ago in their lives. And so um, what are the effects? The effects are tremendous. There are many. These children grow up to be, because remember they were children, they are teenagers, they're going to become adults. And so they are going to repeat the cycle. Because they were abused or they were traumatized, chances are they are going to raise their children the way they were raised. And then they are going to traumatize their children because they, for, to them that is normal. And then the cycle will continue. We shall always have trauma, 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 trauma. Another effect is that um, these children grow up to become people we don't even understand. They grow up and you hear this child never goes back home. This child never... He doesn't want to talk to the parent, doesn't want to know the parent's name. These are, these are children who are traumatized and now they are growing up to, to not to appreciate the situations that they are supposed to be appreciating. For example, you find children that are born in a family and maybe all of them re reacted to the same trauma differently, but this one person they decide to go all, all the way. They abuse the drugs. They do not care who is there. They do not have authority. They do not know control. They are so confused in themselves that the, whatever the brain gives is what they follow. And unfortunately for these children is that because they look normal and they look functional, everyone takes them to be either spoiled uh, or, or naive or you know we give them all sorts of names and yet at the end of the day it's the mental illness the trauma that happened and was not managed another effect is that these children grow up like i mentioned earlier to take up personality disorders every person is normal but now when you start going out of the normal we start worrying you know a child that loved dogs you find he has killed all his dogs why why before you know it, this child is growing in what they are doing. Now from pet dogs, I mean from their pets, they come, they graduate to maybe wild animals, if they are lucky to have wild animals near them. And then from they come to people because they keep growing. Why? They are satisfying a, a, an emptiness that can never be satisfied through what they are doing. But because the brain has stored the memory uh, in a disorganized way, to them, they feel that what they are doing is right. And so the cycle continues. Another effect, of course, it's crime. It, it, it manifests so much in crime. You find children uh, who steal, not because they lack, but because they feel from the time they were children, they stole for a living. <laughs> they stole for a living. If they got something out of the normal, the parents would maybe... Uh, uh, beat them and abuse them and so these children grow up knowing that you know what the normal is the wrong and so they keep on doing those things and then they become old and then they become abusive spouses so you find this husband marries a very innocent girl and abuses the girl abuses the girl emotionally sometimes physically you find him maybe beating this girl and vice versa it could be the girl doing the same to the, uh, to the husband and then another impact is that these children lose identity they, they grow up because now someone has uh, continuously abused this child sexually. She grows up saying, I think it's not right to be a boy or it's not right to be a girl. And so they grow up and they get confused and then they, you know, they lose their identity and they sometimes feel like, you know what, I think if I left this body and, uh, and assumed another body, maybe it could be better. 
And so those are some of the effects of, of trauma. And uh, uh, something else I would want to talk about is, is sometimes there's what we call uh, preferential diagnosis, where you, the person, yes, it's trauma, but it can present differently in all these things we are talking about. But the child may be, and you think maybe, ah, sometimes it could be a headache. Some people develop headaches. You find a child who has headache from the first day to the other day, from an event that happened, and then this child starts having symptoms of a headache or stomach ache. It's very common in children, especially, when they start school around nine years to 12 years because of the pressures of school, the demands of homework, uh, the pressures, uh, the, the, the pressure, um, from the parents wanting the children to excel. And so you find this child, especially the one who is not performing well, if they are siblings, and one is performing so well and the other isn't performing so well, this child tends to have stomach ache all the time. Because that's how the body knows how to complain that, oh my goodness, look at me here. You know, this trauma happened because you're over pushing this child. Or you find parents who are, because they did not get it in life and then they want to make sure that their children get it you know, they live through their children. And so in that pushing and pressurizing of their children, they lose it. And then these children also become defiant. And then the trauma cycle continues and continues. Please allow me to stop there, unless there is a question. Thank you so much. Uh, you explained very well about uh, the trauma, their symptoms, how someone can identify it. I would like to request if anyone has any question, he or she can put in comment box or can raise his or her hand in his screen and he or she can directly put forward to it. Uh, till then, uh, let's move on our question round session. So our first question is from my side is, we know prevention is better than cure. So mm -hmm. with taking this, uh, if a parents or anybody, how he or she can identify the symptoms, uh, easy way to identify the symptoms of trauma in their child. How parents or how a mother or father or elder brother can identify these symptoms in a child. Thank you very much. Yes, the symptoms are very easy to, to identify. The good thing is that we have gone through them. As parents, we have to learn our children. Learn your children. When they are growing up, what do you see? Because they are all born without trauma. So when they are playing and, and they are interacting with each other, what do you see? If you see that uh, these children have been happy, and then out of the blue, you notice one of them is getting withdrawn, that's your time to intervene. You can intervene at a parent level. Excuse me. You can intervene as a, at a parent level, and you notice this child is playing as usual take to the doctors or look at her or him and notice if you see it has graduated that even you as a parent you can't manage it and the doctors are not seeming to help you then seek alternative um, alternative opinions for example you go to a psychiatrist or a psychologist today we have many they are so many just not because you're labeling the child no you're not labeling the child but you're getting concerned because it is one thing that leads to the other. So it's important that you see your children, especially their behaviors. Mm -hmm. Children don't know how to pretend. When they are hurt, they show it. When they are hurt, they show it. Another thing parents can do, they can help not put immense pressure on these children as they are growing up. For example, if they are siblings and you know that one of them is a genius and the other is not a genius, do not compare these children. They were born differently. Uh, yes, they are exposed to the same things, but perception is subjective. So it's, imp it's important that the genius is inspired and encouraged to continue. And then this one who is, seems to struggle, also her or him, you look at him in his areas of strength, and then you approach, approach that child from that. So that this child doesn't feel like, oh my God, the other one is better. Because then this child is going to traumatize himself or herself, trying to impress you. Another thing the parents can do for us is that they should also learn that from time memorial, adults have been adults. So if they can just assume that role of being adults, and if they want to quarrel, and then they go somewhere else, they don't 
expose their children to that quarrel. If they are going to, to you know, uh, like parents who take alcohol, you do not have to take alcohol and even give your children alcohol because you're taking alcohol. You see, that is how you prevent the trauma. If you see that something has happened in the family, uh, for example, it is a calamity, maybe in an area, do not take it for granted. Eh? A school has been banned. A, a, a teacher beat the child. Do not take those things for granted. Look into these children's lives. Why does this child over? Why is this child over clingy and the other child is not too clingy? How come this child is very independent and this child is not? Look into your children's lives. Learn them. Know your children, and then you will see the signs and symptoms. They, they are always there. And then know them. Then take them to psychologists, take them to psychiatrists. Some things are manageable at day one. Some things you need therapy, but at the end of the day, they are manageable. Thank you. Thank you so much. You explained very well how a parents or mother or a father can identify its signs and symptoms. It is very necessary to find out the early so yeah. when when it becomes late it may be critical to for the child and parents also and the treatment should be uh, take more time for it so i think we would like to move on our second question from my side that is we often see we have influences of many things in our life i beg your pardon I beg your pardon. I didn't... We are uh, Hello. I am audible right now. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now you are. Yes. I can now hear you. Okay. Uh, I was saying that we have influences of many things in our life. We have mm -hmm. influenced by the society, the culture, the environment. So, mm -hmm. in your opinion, uh, what are the factors or the key points which are responsible for erasing or for rising up the conditions of trauma in child or teenagers from the social background and the environmental background? So what are the those factors uh, which can contribute uh, for promoting or for developing the traumatic stage in children and the teenagers? Hmm. Thank you very much. Of, <clears throat> of course, social, the social contributes too much. The social and culture, especially for us Africans and everyone else, wherever they are, Asians, uh, Europeans, Caucasians, as in everyone, everyone has a culture. And sometimes these cultural norms demand so much uh, and they are not fair, if I could use that word. So you find that in most cases, the girl child is raised to you know, you're raising a wife, you know? So because you're raising a wife, you put so many expectations on this young girl. This young girl grows up to know that you do not talk when a man talks. You grow, you, you grow up to know that when men are talking, the girl keeps quiet. You're supposed to sit a certain way. You cannot share the table with men. These things are not traumatizing these children, no. But these cultural norms, that gender stereotype, they end up, uh, predisposing this young girl into being traumatized one day. But if society allowed us and we raised our children, especially the girl child, and empowered her and taught her better and let her uh, give her the same opportunities as the male, the male child so that she can compete favorably and she knows that she can do things on her own. Marriage is important, but it will come in when it has to come in then maybe this child will grow up knowing that she's empowered enough to make decisions for herself. Then she can have an opportunity to fight against certain traumas that she could be able, that she has control over. But sometimes culture and society demands otherwise. So you find us predisposing our children to being abused later in life. And so for me, I would encourage people to help their children as they are growing up, to raise them empower them, you know, give them knowledge, give them discipline, give them, um, you know, raise them holistically so that when they grow up, they have a fighting chance. But the more we become, you know, teach them how to be 
subordinates and never raise their head. Then we are raising them to be abused one day and then the trauma cycle will continue. I think we should do something as a society, teach the children, uh, raise uh, awareness, uh, promote mental health, uh, mental wellness, so that at the end of the day, these children know they have a fallback plan. They know they can manage situations when they come, as when they come. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, moving forward to our next question, uh, we see we identify the signs and symptoms of trauma at level of parents. We also learn from you the contribution of society and the culture for developing traumatic stages. We also learn some strategies or the preventive measures to prevent the traumatic stage. Now, uh, what should be the role of the mental health professional? We can say psychologist, psychiatrist, or who are working in this field, counselor. Mm -hmm. So what will be their role or the what? How should they deal with it or what are the those measures, those important things they should keep in their mind while treating or while taking care of this child or the teenagers. So what will be their role uh, in this situation? Thank you. Um, the role of the mental health workers is too big. Too big right now that sometimes I fear, shall we manage? But the answer is yes we can manage. And the biggest role of for mental health workers, the first and biggest role is to create awareness. Create awareness as much as you can. And I'm thanking you so much for this opportunity that we can even come and broadcast about trauma. Already this is big enough as a mental health worker, what you have done today, I commend you. And so this is what we're supposed to be doing. We, we're supposed to go out there and teach the world that you know what? There's mental health and there's mental illness. And it is a disease like any other. It can be managed. So that's the first one, thank you. Then the second one mental health workers should do, they should know their strength or their expertise. For example, uh, we have psychiatrists. These are doctors. They have learned the mental, they have learned the brain. They have learned the behavior. They have been there five years plus learning how to manage mental illness. And so when you know that uh, these people know what to do, then let's, let's trust them. Trust them with these children who we don't understand. Trust them with the, with the people that we see that do not have, you, you query mental illness. Let's take them there. And then we have also psychologists. Psychologists who have learned and have embraced mental, uh, mental health. So they know the therapy use. They know how to approach these children. They know how to manage them. So let us also use them. Those are psychologists. Then we have uh, uh, the psychologists. We have counseling psychologists. We have clinical psychologists. And so let's use them. Let's use them. And then and, and I'm, I'm encouraging these psychologists also to know their strength. For example, if you know that this person, this is a child with trauma and your strength is not trauma, have the power to refer this child. Do not have this child and then damage the child further. No. If you know you cannot, uh, in your counseling skills, in your therapeutic skills, there is no way you can manage this particular child or this particular teenager and any other mental illness. Please have the, the, the power to refer. It's, it's important that health workers learn that referring is not a weakness but a strength. Refer this client for someone else who can manage. And then um, provide the services. So people have the services, but they're too expensive, too expensive. So you find that now, how will this person manage if the expense is too much? But if you provide the service and, you know, sub you know cut costs, because mental illness is not like malaria, which is going to get healed in seven days or shorter. Mental illness does not get you healed in a very long time. So it would be nice for these um, uh, professionals to know and to cut costs to help these people. And then another thing is that if they have chosen to look after them, for example, the substance abusers and uh, substance, <clears throat> substance abusers and the, 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 those people who depend on uh, substances like alcohol and drugs, you know that these people are not going to get well today 
You know they're not going to get well tomorrow. Chances of them falling are also very high. It's part of the disease. So it is important that if you know you can't manage such a client, it is important for you to appreciate and say, you know what? It is in my strength to refer this client to another person who can manage. Another thing health workers should do is that to be available. If you have chosen to help these clients with trauma, especially the children and the teenagers, then be available. When they call, pick up. When they want to talk to you, be there. Do not judge them. So that at the end of the day, they will appreciate who we are and what we are doing for them. Then they will keep coming to us and then we shall keep closing the bridge between professionals and the other. Thank you. Thank you. You have explained each and single term related to trauma uh, very well and I hope that you are this great and well explained session by you he or she will definitely got benefit from it so it is a very nice experience to having you and thank you for providing your valuable time and experience and uh, before winding up our session I am uh, saying that it is just a beginning of our session we will in future do more and more session for the mental health awareness and before winding up i want to request you to kindly introduce about your work uh, briefly and about the thera cave counseling and psychological center how someone wants to visit uh, online or how he or she can know more about the facilities or the uh, services provided by your side and the uh, students who are uh, studying in field of psychology, doing their graduation, doing their masters, PhDs, uh, what should be your advice to them? Okay, uh, I will start with advertising. The <coughs> Therakev is a center that manages people with mental health, uh, mental illness, and so we do counseling. We do. Uh, uh, we do counseling of all caliber. We manage couples, pre and and post marriage counseling. We we help people who have substance uh, dependency disorders. We help people uh, with with all sorts of of mental illness. I do not work alone. We are a team. We have a psychiatrist on board. We have uh, counselors. We have uh, therapists. And so uh, that is the thing that helps us manage the different types of, of mental illnesses. And the ones that we don't manage, we normally refer. I, uh, we have learned the magic behind referring clients that we can't manage. But the ones that we can, we really manage them so well. And then about people who are studying, um, it's a very good profession because you, you, you're learning how to help people and the people that really need, the, uh, that are in need. Mental illness is not like any other illness. It is unique in its presentation. Some of the presentations are very normal or functional. Please allow me to use those words. You find someone, uh, for example, let me use an example of a person abusing alcohol. This person can function, goes to office, comes back in the evening, but there are certain things that this person can't do well. But the other people who will see this person looks at this person like, he or she knows what they are doing. And so you very quick at judging them. You're like, what are they doing? Don't they have brains? Don't they know alcohol is destroying them? You see that? Now, those are the clients that the, <laughs> you people are studying to manage. So you're going to manage them from them not knowing that they have an issue to them knowing that they have an issue and then managing the issue. So for mental illness, it's not a one way. It's not e as easy as these other diseases that come where you say, I have malaria, and they say the parasites are there, and then they give you treatment and you heal. For mental illness, it's a whole, you know, you have to know the person, you have to know the history. You have, so it's a beautiful area of expertise. It's very broad, and the, the, the people are so many that need the help. So it's okay, let them study and finish, and then come and work, because the people are so many, you can't finish them. So it's a very beautiful area, but they should be able to come and know that for mental health workers, it's not about prestige, it's about service. You come knowing you're going to serve. 
the prestige, if it comes, well and good. If it does not come, still you know that you came knowing that you're coming to serve because the clients that you're going to have are not normal clients. They are clients that do not even know their names. They are clients that do not even know where they are. They don't even know whether they're on earth or elsewhere or, you know. So mental illness is that's unique. So when you come to work as a mental health worker, you come knowing you're coming to serve. Yes, please. Thank you. Yes, truly said. Uh, there should be a feeling of empathy uh, in ourselves before entering in field of mental health services. So, as we know, anyone has mind, there will be a mental issues there, not only in any country, not only particularly in India or the Uganda, but it is a problem of all over the world. So, we should try to unite and I am trying to unite all the mental health professional at my level at what I can do. So, just for online session, I am trying to unite all of them. So, any help, any through interaction, we can communicate with each other, we can share our ideas and we can take experience and knowledge, a great experience like you shared today about the trauma, especially in child and the teenagers. Uh, so I would like to request anyone who has any uh, queries related to it, he or she can uh, put in the live stream and I will answer them any contact details. So uh, thank you so much for providing your valuable time and sharing your experience, knowledge, and I hope that the world should be free from trauma and each and every child should live a happy life, a blessed life. Uh, I would yeah. pray to Lord that uh, everybody uh, all over, across the world, not limitation with countries, countries is the boundary made by humans, not by God. So. I would like to pray God that each and every soul on the earth should live a happy life, a blissful life and we in future, in future life communicate and try to serve humanity in a better ways and mental health professionals are grateful, are especially in my opinion because they are treating with the thoughts of a person. If we are able to change the thoughts, it is a great service in my opinion. So I would like to again thank you for your valuable time. And before winding up our session, I would like to uh, conclude a uh, remark or a conclude sentence or a conclude message from your side to all over the world or whatever you want to say as a conclude message to uh, everybody, uh, you can proceed. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for hosting me and for enlightening the world about trauma. I will conclude by telling the world that trauma is real. It happens. It happened when it happens as children, we get to teenagehood with the trauma and into adulthood with the trauma. It can be stopped, especially if you help the children when still early. So that when they go into their teenagehood, there is no trauma or the trauma they have is manageable. So that at the end of the day, we, we cut the cycle so that it doesn't have to recur and keep recurring and recurring. I want to thank you so much, everyone who has been able to watch. I want to thank you, thank you so, so much. And I pray that you have learned a thing or two. Please um, teach the ones that didn't manage to come. Uh, spread the word about mental illness. It is real. It happens. And the more we... Uh, educate the world about it, the better. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, now, with your permission, uh, we should wind up our session. Mm -hmm. And with the promise to our audience and the viewers who are watching us and in future watch our this session, we will again come uh, on uh, another important topic and from uh, ma'am uh, we all will learn uh, so much experience things and try to adopt in our life and live a happy life and mental full of mental peace and uh, from india uh, i uh, greet everyone who joins as, as audience during this session and who are helping ma'am for 
managing all their great services uh, i am thanking all those persons who are contributing in this great work thank you so much